All right, let's take a look at another example here um, using our natural log x rule to find antiderivatives. So with a natural log rule, it says that if the derivative of the bottom equals the top, you can apply the rule. It's just a natural log absolute value of the bottom. So in this case, you guys, the, uh, the derivative of the bottom is equal to negative 2x. So look at the top, and it's 5x. So the x is there, okay, so that's important. But um, my constants are obviously off. So in this case, I have the 5. Um, and I, I want the top to be negative 2x instead of 5x. So first off, that 5 is just getting in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring that 5 outside of the integral. Okay, and then, um, so on the top right now, I have x, 7 minus x squared dx. So now I have it set up that the top is just x, and I, I want the top, because the bottom is negative 2x, to be negative 2x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply outside of the integral by negative 2 over negative 2. Okay, and what I'm going to do here, again, I'm just multiplying by 1, so I'm not changing the value at all. I'm going to take this one and bring it inside, and it's going to end up being on the outside. I'll have the 5 still there. I'll have the negative 2 on the bottom, so it's negative 5 halves on the outside times the integral of negative 2x, because I brought that inside, over 7 minus x squared. So you can see here that I have it set up perfectly now to use the natural log rule since the derivative of the bottom equals the top. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply the natural log rule. So it's just going to be negative 5 halves in front. Constant just goes along for the ride. Natural log, absolute value at the bottom, plus c. So there is my antiderivative. And of course, with any antiderivative, you could always check. I mean, the way you can check is to take the derivative of this, and it should end up simplifying to this up here. Okay. All right, another example here uh, that we're looking at. So, uh, again, the natural log rule works when you take the derivative of the bottom and it equals the top. So in this case, if I take the derivative of the bottom, the derivative of cosine x over 3, just for us to reference, reference this, derivative of cosine is negative sine, so it would be negative sine. I would keep my inner function the same, and then I'd multiply times the derivative of the inner function, which would be 1 third. So let me put that in front, so it would be negative 1 third in front here. So that's the derivative of the bottom, since the derivative of 6 is just 0. So I look here, and I have sine on top, okay? So um, I just need it to be negative 1 third um, sine. So what I need to do is I need to make sure that this is negative 1 third. So I'm going to do a negative 1 third over negative 1 third. And by doing that, it, you know, I'm just multiplying by 1. I'm not changing the value at all. And I will take this on the inside and bring it on in. So it's going to end up being... Outside my integral here, I'm going to have 1 over negative 1 third, and I'll simplify that in just a second. And on the inside here, I'll have negative 1 third sine x over 3, all over cosine x over 3 plus 6 dx. So now I have it set up perfectly on the inside such that the derivative of the bottom is equal to the top, so that's good stuff. Now, when I do my antiderivative, you know, the constant goes along for the ride. This right here, I would rather rewrite this. You know, 1 divided by 1 third is just 3. So this is just the same thing as negative 3, okay? And then natural log, absolute value of the bottom, which is cosine x over 3 plus 6, okay? And then plus c. And I guess that helps, would always be positive, since if you add 6 to cosine, it's always going to be positive. So you probably don't need the absolute, absolute value signs there, but that still works out.